Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Hayes, who's a dermatologist and a dermatology uh, educator, and we're going to be talking about the risks of skin cancer and outdoor swimming. Would you like to give us a little bit of uh, background as well as to how come you've ended up as a uh, dermatology educator? Please. I gradually morphed from general practice via a um, uh, what you call a GP with a special interest in dermatology and um, for the last 20, well, was about 15 years or so I've been involved with a group called the Primary Care Dermatology Society uh, which exists uh, because British GPs on the whole don't have quite as much skill in this area um, as they might have and so we arrange conferences because um, the skin cancer is massively on the increase. So I wanted to, uh, to talk to Dr. Stephen and I, I reached out to him because I was, it's something I'm concerned about myself because at this time of year I'm starting to crank up my training for distant stuff. Later on in the summer I've got a, a 10k coming up in September, I, I tend to do one a year but that means that I am doing longer swims. I, I could be in the water for two or three hours mm. and it occurred to me that whether I'm not wearing a wetsuit my face is always exposed and so are my hands and uh, the bottom of the backs of my legs if I'm wearing a wetsuit but mostly mm. I'm skinned so I'm in a swimsuit and there's certainly some areas of my body that are quite difficult to reach to put sun cream on. Mm. So it was something that, um, uh, that I've been thinking about for a while. So I guess my first question is, what is skin cancer and who's most at risk from it? That's a big question, I'll try and keep it short. But first and foremost, a cancer of any kind is an uncontrolled growth of cells. Skin cancers are very common and they are increasingly common. Essentially, it is caused by solar radiation. And that's not the whole story, uh, but when people see me in my clinic, I say, well, you've got a skin cancer, don't worry, we can cure it for you. Uh, which is almost always true, at 99% of all skin cancers are curable. <laughs> Thankfully, That's nice to hear. and um, people ask me why have I got a skin cancer? I say three reasons: uh, genetics, which mainly comes down to skin type. Uh, skin cancer certainly does discriminate. Uh, it is a disease of white people, very much. And the paler your skin is, we talk about skin types. Skin types one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, where six is deep black, and the type one skin is very pale. People who've got blue or green eyes, red or blonde hair, very few moles and who burn very easily, the Celtic or uh, sort of Scandinavian types of people and these people are very susceptible to getting burned and the, the, the more natural pigment your skin has the less harm you take from the sun but nevertheless sunlight is radiation, uh, radiation is one of the causes of cancer. So the, the lighter your skin the, the, the more you need to take heed and to... And, and very, very much so. Life is unfair, as the song goes, and um, that's the way it is. So, um, some people are genetically more at risk because they have hundreds of moles. There is a condition called uh, atypical mole syndrome in which people have got over a hundred moles and a number of their moles are, say, bigger than six millimetres and of a slightly unusual shape. Uh, that is genetic and these people are genetic for genetic reasons they are at greater risk of a skin cancer. Um, although increasingly we don't think it's so much having atypical or abnormal looking moles, it's having a very large number of moles, say more than a hundred. I should clarify, uh, when dermatologists talk about moles we mean melanocytic nevi. Well um, Stephen, as an outdoor swimmer I'd say that myself and my swim buddies probably mm. see more of each parts of each other's body that aren't often exposed than even uh, their partners, the parts that you can't necessarily see, mm. the backs of the legs, yeah. uh, the back mm. and things. So if I'm swimming with somebody um, or you know, as we're chatting mm. before or after we're getting changed, what sort of things could I be could I be looking for? I mean I'm not talking about doing a full a full yeah, examination, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about spotting. Yes. that I could alert them to? Well, there are three main kinds of skin cancer. Uh, I mean, the simple answer is anything which looks wrong. Uh, anything on the skin which is noticeably larger than other things on the skin, something which stands out. Uh, we often talk about the ugly duckling 
I've posted a number of examples of these on my blog. Uh, the, the lesion on somebody's skin that your eye is immediately drawn into. Somebody's got maybe 50 moles on their back and one of them your eye is immediately drawn to because of its difference in size, in shape, in colour. Obviously anything that's bleeding we don't like but that's pretty obvious, too obvious to need stating. Um, so I think it's multiple colours is, is of interest. Uh, if something's just two shades of brown there's nothing else wrong with it, we're not very concerned. But if a mole is brown plus one or more of black, blue, red or grey, a multi-coloured mole, that, that should arise considerable concern. But the most common by far is the basal cell cancer. It's much more common on the head and neck and shoulders, the sun exposed parts of the skin and particularly in people over 60. Uh, the, more, the older we get the much more likely we are to get a skin cancer. Most of the people I see in my NHS clinic I would say are over 70. That doesn't mean that a younger person can't get a skin cancer and they usually present as a, a scab that won't heal. You think it's a picked spot or a pimple or an insect bite or something but you know two, three, four, five weeks go by, a month goes by, two months go by and it still forms a little scab. People often say oh I thought it was a shaving cut, I thought it was an insect bite. So the little scab that never quite heals up, they obviously we do get pimples and we do get shaving cuts and but they usually will heal within two weeks. It almost never gets into the bloodstream and spreads. Uh, if it's caught early it can often be treated by cream or by a combination of light and cream cream uh, or it can be cut up by quite simple surgery and I often say to people look you've got a basal cell cancer but it's more of an inconvenience than a danger this is not going to kill you. Um, now the squamous cell cancer is less common than the basal cell about ratio of about five to one but they are considerably more aggressive. Then We don't need to worry about people diagnosing them as a rule because they grow quite fast. Uh, I say to people you know if you get a new fast growing lump sometimes they've got a hard crust on the top sometimes they haven't sometimes they've ulcerated that's to say the skin is broken it's, it's oozing bleeding scabbing um, you usually get them on sun exposed uh, areas one thing that particularly bothers me uh, is bald men uh, white men who go bald you know if you haven't got the sun if you haven't got the hair protecting the top of your head you need a hat I see so many older men, you know, 75 years of age, comes in, new fast growing lump on the top of the head. You take a look at it, I've shown you a few pictures. The head is very badly damaged by the sun, they've got a nasty cancer growing in the middle of it. It'll need to be cut out down to the bone and skin grafted, which is not a nice thing to have to go through. So it's really worth avoiding those. And we don't see them in women. I mean, women do get squamous cell cancers, but not on the top of ball belts. Women don't go bald as often as men. And if a woman goes bald, as a rule, she will wear a scarf, a hat, or a wig. Uh, and it gives enormous protection. But if you look at the skin that has been bald and has not been protected, it's very badly damaged. And if you lift the hair and look underneath the hair, um, where the hair has been giving some protection, people have usually got some hair, like the skin's normal under that, mm. proving directly and without any doubt at all that a normal head of hair will give you tremendously good protection against um, the, the sun damage, the radiation from the sun that can lead to cancer. So it's really, if you go bald, wear a hat. Yeah, well when, I'm, when we go swimming that is one good mm. thing that mm. uh, we'd wear a hat for visibility as well as a toe mm. float but good news for uh, for the baldies out there that's also going to mm. protect their head better yeah. than any sun cream could do. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that for swimming the very best protection we could have if we're unable to avoid because if we're doing some training and we need the water here the water's gradually coming up yep. um it will be high water around um i think it's probably around one o'clock today one mm. until about four um so if i was doing a training swim today that's when i'd be in the water so mm. i'm guessing that your advice would be that for that swim at that time of day i'd be as well wearing a wetsuit rather than going in in my swimsuit in, um, in, in general terms, broadly, that, that would be true. So that's great. We've, uh, we've talked about what we could do checking out our swim buddies and, and other people that we, uh, that we might see who are, uh, that we see their skin. What could I do for myself? Because I swim on my own a lot. I can obviously see the bits that I can easily see, but there's certainly parts of my body that, uh, that mm. are difficult to spot. 
How could I monitor for myself? Um, I, mean, I went to Australia a little while ago and there is uh, three times as much skin cancer per thousand people, per million people per year than we do. Uh, and also GPs are allowed and indeed encouraged and rewarded for, uh, for doing skin checks. And a lot of people pay the equivalent of about £50 English money to go and see a highly skilled GP for a head, absolutely serious head to toe skin check and they pick up tiny skin cancers. Uh, realistically that isn't something that's available in the UK. Um, you go see a private dermatologist that will cost you at least £200. Uh, your GP is neither trained nor equipped nor, nor tasked with offering full skin checks and most people probably don't need them. So the key thing is to look out for anything that is new or changing anything that's new or changing. And to do that, if you can rely on your memory or your partner's memory, if you have a partner you live with at home, um, and probably you're not gonna be able to do a very systematic check with a, while you're out swimming with a, a buddy uh, or in the gym, say. Um, but you can, you can check your own skin, look, uh, and you can either do it from memory or you can do it from photographs. Now, on the subject of total body photography, this is something which has been well proven uh, by the international re the skin cancer research community, uh, people who are known to have a high risk of getting a melanoma particularly, we're not so worried about the other two cancers. So if we get a basal cell cancer, they'll notice it eventually and it's not going to kill them. If we get a squamous cell cancer, it grows fast and makes its presence felt. So they will come for advice quickly as a rule. Melanomas can grow silently for years and if you wait until they are big and ugly and bleeding, then it'll probably kill you, it'll probably already spread, and that's very bad news. But essentially we're, look, we're looking for something that's changed in appearance. One myth I like to deal with is that skin cancer has itch. A lot of leaflets say that. I think they're copied from one leaflet to the next. I see skin cancers every day at work. They don't itch. If someone comes up with something that itches, it's probably not gonna be a skin cancer. And if they've got a skin cancer, it almost never itch. So I forget about that. They're not painful. I've seen people who say, well, I would have come earlier. You know, I took one look at it, oh my goodness, I wish you'd come a year earlier with that. And they're told, but it wasn't painful. Though. I wasn't worried because it wasn't painful. That's an, a really important myth to dispel. Uh, if you wait until it hurts, then you know, you'll never detect it. Um, funny colors, mixture of colors, something that's, that's new, that's changing, something that wasn't there last year. And the effect of sun exposure is cumulative. It's a bit like saving in a pension scheme. Uh, I think that's quite a good analogy because when you're 20, you can't imagine being 80. Yeah. But when you're 80, uh, you might think, oh dear, I wish that when I'd 20, I was 20, I'd started saving money for my old age. Now I'd be much more comfortable. And again, if uh, when you're 20, you don't think about getting skin cancer as a 75 year old. Uh, but if you don't protect, if you go poorly, don't protect yourself, then I guarantee you'll be meeting Mr. Knife and Mr. Skin Graft, you know, probably, anyhow. Uh, and, that's no, and you could have avoided it if you'd taken sensible precautions over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And again, if you are going out in the sun, eventually you will get enough sun on your skin to cause a cancer. Mm -hmm. It's not through a massive amount of sunbathing or even through a, a couple of bad sunburns. Obviously you want to avoid sunburns for sure, but it's getting a little bit of sun uh, it's getting tens of thousands of hours of average level sun on the skin. So it's all about protection. But am I saying that people shouldn't go swimming? Even if you, you're not going to be able to give yourself 100 protection while you're swimming. Mm. I and mean, if you're bald, you certainly wear a hat. And the more clothes, the more, the more you cover your skin with clothing, the less sun's getting on it. And obviously on a very hot sunny day, people are going, going out swimming over midday on a June day like this when we've got very bright, strong sun then yeah, there's an element of risk. As I say, I cycled here today, there was, mm. I'll be cycling home as well. Uh, there's an element of risk in that, but mm. I'll take that, I'll take it, and I'll be as careful as I can. It, it's interesting, isn't it? There's so many facets to it, but it, it seems that it is really quite preventable, or at least you can minimize, uh, even if you are predetermined that the likelihood is you will, you will get skin cancer because of the tone of your skin. Actually, if you take the precautions and swim, um, outside of the strongest times, you wear something on your skin um, and you don't do it at midday for two hours a day, every day, then hopefully we'll, uh, we'll all be a bit safer. Lots and lots of interesting stuff there um, and it could be quite easy to become a little bit paranoid about being out in the sun and worried mm. about leaving your, leaving your house for it. Mm. But um, what would you say to that? 
Well, life is a wonderful pageant and there are so many things to be grateful for and to enjoy. And there are many dangers as well. I mean, when you're bringing up a child, you have to warn them, don't run across the road, you might be run over and killed, don't get into a stranger's car, don't uh, fall into water because you might drown, and don't get, be careful in the sun, you don't want to get burned. Uh, regrettably, life is full of dangers as well as joys and pleasures. Uh, we need to have a sense of proportion. Thank you ever so much for coming along and meeting me. It's been fascinating to chat to you about this. And uh, I'm hoping that people have, um, have picked up some good tips and uh, we won't, get, won't be getting sunburned, we won't be swimming at funny times of the day. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and if you have, you'll give it a like, drop us a comment, uh, let me know if you've got any questions and uh, I'll pass them on to Stephen. But I'm also going to link you to two of the websites, actually three websites. I'll link you to his own dermatology blog, I'll link you to the PCDS website and also the cancer research one to find out much more information than we can give you in this video. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on my face ding in the little bell and you'll know when the next one's out and I'll see you next time. Bye!